Hi there and welcome back. My name is Ganesh. I'm from learnenglishlab.com and in today's lesson we're going to talk about three commonly confused prepositions of place at, in, and on. In this lesson we'll do two things. We will first look at the difference between at, in, and on. I'll also tell you where to use them correctly and then we will look at some common fixed expressions with these prepositions. Alright, so first, what's the difference between them? The difference is this. The word at shows us the location of a person or thing. It's kind of like pointing to a place and saying over there. For example, if I said there's someone at the door, then I'm saying that uh, a person is standing next to the door. So you know the location of that person. The word in says that a thing is inside of something bigger. Like for example, I put some coins in a box. So we know that the coins are inside of a box. The word on uh, says that a thing is on top of something else. For example, there are three books on the table. So the books are on top of the table. That's the difference between the words at, in, and on. Now over here, I have some common things and we will talk about which prepositions you can use with these. Now in many uh, cases, you can use more than one preposition and the meaning will change depending on which one you use. Okay, first is table. Now like in my example, where I said there are three books on the table, we can use on to show that there's something on top of a table. We don't normally use in except if you're saying um, or if you're talking about drilling a hole in a table then you can use in but it's very uncommon so I've put an X there. But what about at? Can you use at? Well yes, if you go to a restaurant you will sit at a table. That means that you're sitting next to the table and you're, you're, but you would be sitting on a chair and you would be eating at the table. If we say that a person sat on a table, then that would mean that they climbed on top of the table and sat there, which is a very strange sight and a manager of the restaurant may have even called the police. So be aware of that difference between at and on. At means next to a table and on means on top of. Okay, next is door. Now with doors, we don't use in again, uh, but we can use at to show that there is a person next to the door and that's a very common expression. For example, there's someone at the door, can you please see who it is? We can also use on if we want to talk about someone knocking on a door we knock on doors. Or if you want to talk about sticking something like a poster on a door. So that's on. Okay, next is fridge. The most common expression with uh, fridges is in. We put food in the fridge. Uh, but if you're talking about sticking something like a magnet or uh, a sticker on the outside of the fridge, then you would use on. So in means inside the fridge, on refers to the outside of the fridge. With streets, there's an important difference you need to keep in mind. Uh, and that is that when we talk normally, uh, in most situations, we would use the preposition on to mean that a person was walking on the side of a street. Okay, so if I said I was walking on the street yesterday, that means I was walking on the sidewalk or what's called the pavement in British English. So that's on. But if you say that you were walking in a street, that means you were walking in the middle of the street. And you might be in danger because there might be vehicles coming at you. So in a street means in the middle of the street. Very important. We don't use at with streets. 
Okay, the next few examples are interesting. The first one is hotel. With hotels, we don't use on. Commonly, we say at a hotel or the hotel. For example, let's say a friend calls me and my friend asks, Hey, where are you? Are you at home? And I say, Oh no, I'm at a hotel. I'm at a hotel. So my friend knows that my location is a hotel. But what about in? Can you say in a hotel? Well, yes, but only if you want to say very specifically that you are inside the hotel. So let's think of another example. Let's say that me and a co-worker, a co-worker means a person that works along with me in my office, uh, called Jeff. So me and Jeff are on a business trip in another city. Okay. Uh, now me and Jeff have been staying at the same hotel. The business trip comes to an end and it's time to leave the hotel and catch our flight. So I come to the reception area and I check out of my room, but there's a problem. And the problem is that I don't see Jeff anywhere and it's getting late and we need to go and catch flight. So I call Jeff and I say, Hey Jeff, where are you? Jeff says, what do you mean? I'm in the hotel. Because Jeff knows that we're both in the same hotel and Jeff says that he's inside the hotel. And I say, yeah, but where are you in the hotel? Jeff says, oh, I'm in my room. Okay. With room, we don't use on or at because room is like a box and you are uh, inside the room. So Jeff says, I'm in my room. And I say, well, it's time to leave, Jeff. We have a flight to catch. So Jeff asks, where are you? And I say, I'm in the lobby. The lobby means the waiting area where there are sofas and you can sit there and you can wait for someone. So I say, I'm in the lobby. Uh, so Jeff answers, well, don't worry. I'll be there in five minutes. And I say, well, how can you be here in five minutes? And he says, well, I'm already at the elevator. So as we were speaking, he left his room and he is now at the elevator. At the elevator means he's waiting just outside the elevator and he's waiting for uh, the elevator to come to his floor. And then I hear a ting. That's uh, Jeff's elevator. The doors open and he gets in the elevator and he says, Okay, now I'm in the elevator. I'll see you in a minute. So I hang up. There comes Jeff. We leave and we catch our plane. Thank you very much. Okay, so now you know where to use at, in, and on. Remember that the meaning can change depending on which one you use. For example, with elevator, at means near the elevator and in means inside the elevator. And in many cases, we cannot use some prepositions. We cannot say on the elevator, for example, because that would mean on top of the elevator. Like in an action movie where the hero and the villain are fighting on top of an elevator, right? Doesn't make a lot of sense in real life. Okay, now that you know this, let's now move on and look at some fixed expressions. We call these fixed expressions because these don't change. Uh, now, in the examples that we just discussed, like with tables, for example, you can be sitting at a table or there can be things on a table and the meaning is different. But with these, the expressions never change and the meaning is always the same. Uh, let's look at at first. All of these are answers to the question, where are you or where is he or she? A person can be at home at school, at work, at a party or at an event, at college or at university. These will never change. We will never say in home or on school or on work. Those don't even sound right and they make no sense. So it's a good idea for you to memorize all of these so that whenever you want to talk about home, school, work, parties, etc., 
you can always use at. So remember to commit these to your memory. Okay, let's now talk about in and on. And there are some tricky expressions here. You'll see that I've divided these into three sections. Let's look at the first section. These are some common expressions with in. We talk about fish in the sea, um, clouds in the sky. You might have a swimming pool in your backyard. Those are common expressions. I like to lie on the couch and watch TV. Couch means sofa. Sometimes I like to lie on the floor um, and often I also find dust on the floor. So I don't always stay there. I get up and I go and lie on my couch. These are all pretty simple expressions. But now let's look at some tricky ones. This section is about the media. Now when we talk about the media like newspapers or TV or the radio etc. There are some rules to keep in mind. If you're talking about the newspaper or a movie, then you will use in. For example, I read an interesting article in the newspaper this morning. Or I like watching uh, fight scenes in Jackie Chan movies. Okay, so in. But if you're talking about the radio or TV, then you use on. For instance, um, I like listening to talk shows on the radio where people chat. Or um, Batman is one of my favorite cartoons on TV. Now you might ask, why is that? Why are we saying in for newspaper and movies but on for radio and TV? Well actually there's really no reason. This is just how people have been speaking for many years. So these have become a habit. But like I said, you don't need to worry about why this is because these are fixed expressions. Okay, finally, let's talk about vehicles. Again, there is a rule. If you're talking about small vehicles like cars or boats, then you will use in. For example, the bank robbers got into a car or in a car and escaped. Okay, so they got in a car and escaped. Or me and my family had an amazing ride in a boat. Okay? But if you're talking about bigger vehicles like buses, trains, or planes, then you will use on. Uh, imagine that somebody calls you and they ask, uh, Hey, where are you? And you say, Hey, listen, I can't talk now because I just got on a plane. You're saying, I just got on a plane. When you get on a plane, you have to turn off your cell phone. So you say, I can't talk. Or imagine the caller asks you, uh, hey, why is, it, why is there so much noise? And you say, oh, I'm on a train. That's why it's so noisy. You're on a train. Similarly, you can be on a bus. Okay, now once again, remember to look at these kinds of fixed expressions and memorize these uh, because these don't change and in conversations, it is very useful if you're not searching for the right expression and if you already have them in your memory and you can produce them fluently. Okay. All right. So now you know where to use at, in and on correctly. You know the difference and you also know a lot of fixed expressions with these prepositions. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Remember to subscribe to this channel and I'll see you in another lesson soon.